Over a quarter of a million people in Britain are homeless. Four days until we're living in my car. OK. We need help. But with nearly two million families waiting for council homes... What is actually going to happen to my children? Are they going to die of hypothermia in the street? Not everyone gets the help they want. If you're black and you come in the council with seven kids, you will get housed. If you're me, who's white, I will not get housed. The system decides who's most deserving. If the council can't give me what I need, I would go f mental. And who's left on the street? My view on the council, personally, piss take. In Britain's most densely populated city, Portsmouth, there's a shrinking number of council homes. We've lost about 50% of the housing stock we had over the last 30 years. Demand far outstrips supply. And the bottom line is we simply don't have enough housing to meet all of that demand. Government plans to extend the right to buy scheme are expected to reduce social housing stock even further. Among the few properties soon to become available, this one-bedroom second-floor flat for £116 a week and a two-bedroom apartment in a large council block for £95 a week. Please. These people all claim to be facing homelessness. This isn't my fault. I haven't asked to be made homeless. Okay. This is really, really difficult. But who will be lucky enough to be given the keys? <laughs> Dealing with the city's growing homeless problem falls to housing officers like Jackie. All right, then. Thanks. Bye. With homeless people, we have to prioritise those that are the most vulnerable. There's a limited supply of social housing, so it is one offer only. If the person doesn't accept the offer of accommodation, the likelihood is, is the council won't rehouse them. Unemployed mum of four, Emma, has come to the council as she'll be homeless in just six days' time. My landlord has decided to sell the house that I live in and I need to be housed. I need an upstairs and a downstairs, preferably with a garden, because I've got children and a dog. For the last 14 years, Emma has been renting this three-storey townhouse for just £150 per week, all covered by housing benefit. She says she can't find another affordable home in the private sector. That one's a ride. That's in the Isle of Wight. I'd like a property around this area. My younger son has global learning delay. It's important that he stays in school because he's getting the help that he needs. She says her own health issues also affect the type of property she can accept. I have a huge anxiety about heights. Mentally, physically, I couldn't cope with it. It would make me ill. And the dogs come in with me wherever I go. They can't just tell you to get rid of an animal. If it was somewhere unsuitable, the somewhere that I didn't want to be, I would literally hit the roof. I would go fucking mental. The council have accepted duty to house Emma, as she has dependent children. Emma, do you want to go to but their one-offer policy means Emma risks becoming homeless if she turns down the property she's allocated. I can't guarantee you a property where you can take your dog to because I can't get so... rid of him. I'm sorry. I've had him for 13 years. Yeah. That's like that's like saying, well, you've got to get rid of one of your kids. You know what I mean? I can't do that. 
I knew your dog's going to be an issue because you've had him such a long, long time. He's staying with me. Even if I've got a super glue into me, he's staying with me. <laughs> You're looking at a flat and probably an upper floor. That is I the reality. What's the reasons that you can't manage well, I've got severe anxiety, depression. OK. But physically, what is it about stairs that you couldn't do? It's not physically stairs, it's heights. It's not stairs. It's not stairs. I've, I've... I've lived high up before and I didn't do very well with it. Hence why I moved into a private in the first place. But... You and your kids are becoming homeless and we need to find a property for you to live in and that has to be the priority. If the council can't give me what I need, I'll do what I have to do. If I have to put myself and the kids on the streets to make a point, I will do that. The number of applications for homelessness in Portsmouth has risen by a third in the last year. 61-year-old former naval engineer Gordon has been homeless for 18 months. Right, here we are again. Following an accident at work, he now survives on £70 a week, employment and support allowance, and beds down in a disused garage in the city's back streets. This is where I, where I sleep. There's my all-important pillow. Um, basically, my outer sleeping bag goes that way. My inner sleeping bag goes in between. Rather like a hot dog. And then that goes over. And that's my bedroom. Gordon's home life unraveled after the death from natural causes of his 22-year-old son. Daniel was just everything you wanted in a, in a, in a son, you know. He, he had won the lottery ten times over, just, just watching him sack around on his bike. Basically, you, you miss him so much. I mean, I miss him coming in the door and laughing and joking and just, you know, I left his room for ages untouched. Unable to cope, Gordon hit the bottle, losing his family and his home. Affected my work, my relationship with my wife, my relationship with Francesca and Guy and my other two children. I, I don't drink to be um, <clears throat> out of it anymore. But the fact is now I am homeless, and the fact is that now I'm divorced. The prospect of another freezing winter on the streets has finally led Gordon to seek help from the council. So you have no funds? No. You have no money in the bank? No. And you have no, I have actually. We've got 38 pence. Right, OK. What we need to do is to look at the best type of accommodation right. for you, right. whether you might need some sort of supported accommodation. No, I don't really need any kind you of You don't support. feel that you need any kind of hostel no. accommodation. No. No. So you could go on to our waiting list. Right. You'd only have a low level of housing need, yeah. and you probably wouldn't get housed for quite a long time. Right. No. So, what we would encourage you to do is to find yourself a private rented property right. Right. because that is going to be the quickest solution. Right. You are eligible for housing benefit. Central Point will very often help with a rent deposit. And this is some information about private landlords, okay? Right. If you don't get anywhere, or if your health deteriorates, come back right. and see us. Right, OK. Well, good luck. Thank you. All right, then. Bye. Bye-bye.
A lot of the people that we deal with are, are single males. If there's relatively good health, we don't deem them to have any vulnerability, and so there's no homeless duty to them. As a human being, sometimes I do see people and, you know, and feel sorry for them and really want to be able to help them, but we've got quite strict guidelines and we can't all just be helping the people we like. It's actually freezing living in the streets and I'm on my own. I mean, my future depends on me getting somewhere a bit more secure and, and safer. One in ten of all homeless cases seen by Portsmouth Council are deemed to have caused their own homelessness. If we make the decision that somebody is intentionally homeless, what that means is that someone's direct actions have caused their homelessness. People who have not paid their rent, people evicted for you know, antisocial behaviour, any, any kind of breach of your tenancy, really. If the council decide an applicant has made themselves intentionally homeless, then they have no duty to rehouse them. Laura Shepherd and Luke Morris. Lauren and Luke claim they're homeless after being evicted by their landlord. Good morning. My name's Billy. How can I help? Right, well, basically, we've just been made uh, legally evicted. Okay. Well, they took the keys off me. I didn't know how, when, and physically well, how say, to get my stuff out. When you say take the keys off of you, when did you give the keys back? Yesterday. The landlord wanted the keys back. As they voluntarily gave up the flat, Billy suspects Lauren and Luke may be intentionally homeless and needs to investigate further. I need to ask a lot more questions and find a lot more about your, about your circumstances. Well, I can't just... You can't just walk into the council and just say, got a flat, right. give me some money. I, I need to ask questions no, first. because the government are just interested in uh, housing immigrants and illegal immigrants before they have their own. I'm not going to start having a conversation with you about immigration today, sir. We're here to talk about your homelessness. Yeah, exactly. I'm not homelessness. Here to... We're here yes. to help not talk about immigration. Yeah. Four okay. days until we're living in my car. OK. Right? So, do you know what I mean? We need help. Yeah, OK. If you're white English, like us, right, so you, you should be, like, first in line. You should be the ones that, like, right, do you know what I mean? There you go. You're white English, boff. If, you, you know if you're if you're earning money... If I was money, an illegal immigrant, yeah, wouldn't I'm, you know, I'm not... Right, I can guarantee you, you black, there you go, there's your fucking benefits, there's your council tax, there's your, there's your house, mate, here you are, there's ten grand, go and fight and sort yourself out. Can you stop swearing at me, please, sir? Right. She's had enough. You need to stop swearing at me. Cut the shit. Right. If you don't stop swearing, sir, I'm going to have to end this interview. Mr. Fine, right, that was. Yeah. Like... Give me a piece of paper and I'll write everything down and then you can. Sir, read. you can't lunge towards me. I didn't lunge you. But you can't reach across the counter like that, sir, and try and take my notes. It'd be easy enough for me and her to get her fucking arrested and put in prison, to be quite honest, for murder. OK. Are you right? If someone was to murder somebody, they'd probably go to prison, yeah? I, I don't understand what your point is, sir. At least you've got a roof there. over your head, at least you get fed three times a day. Do you know what I mean? Don't get fuck all out from anyone else. Well, Go I on. just want some help. We're trying to get help. No, they're not going to give it to you. Fuck's sake! Don't you understand that? Do you know what I mean? I need to go for a fucking fact before I end up insane. 
What's the point of getting fucking angry about it? I, I can't I'm, be sworn at and I things like that. I fully understand where you're coming from. You're trying to do the best. You're trying to help us. Yeah. They're more interested in fucking giving Muslims and fucking Pakis and fuck knows what else fucking housing in their own. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, look, they probably got a house already. <laughs> probably moving in to it tomorrow. It's not fair. It was the first time someone's tried to take my notepad. That's that's a new one on me, I have to say. But it is frustrating when anyone um, comes in and is angry that you're not able to help them. I think sometimes when people are in quite frustrating situations, they're like a scapegoat. They're like someone they can point at and go, this person's to blame, not me. If you're black and you get off an aeroplane and you come in the council with seven kids, you will get housed. I saw people coming for Italy, wherever, uh, German. They come in here just six months, they got a one bedroom flat. And ask them, what you done to get that thing? Nothing. It's just been for cancer. They gave it to me. People like myself should get priority because obviously we've been a citizen here for all our life and it's not fair when you get immigrants coming over and they just give hands them out loop. They're hot dogs, basically. There's a big myth out there that due to EU migration, and, and asylum seekers and things like that, that a lot of homes are going to uh, non-UK nationals. This just isn't the case in Portsmouth. I don't believe it to be the experience in this country. 95% of our housing stock goes to a UK national. Twenty-nine-year-old Vasil from Romania has no home but does have a job. He's due to start working at McDonald's in the morning. I sleep outside in the street. It's completely impossible. If you have a job, you have to sleep somewhere. You have to stay somewhere, no? You can't work if you don't sleep. Vasil says he was raised in an orphanage and fled Romania because of his sexuality. Life in Romania was very tough. Mm. Impossible to be gay. If you say it, um, that you are gay in the Romanian, you don't get a job. If somebody see it or have just feeling, you, you will be attacked for, uh, for sure. I like England, but I don't like to stay in the street in uh, England. I don't want to, to die in the street of England just because I'm Romanian. Hello, Mr. Vasil. How can I help you today? I need a place to stay. OK. You've got a job. Hmm. OK, and where are you originally from? Romania. Romania. I think this is the reason why every door is closed. It's not that, it's just that you have to be able to fill certain criteria. So obviously you got yourself a job now. Mm. Unfortunately... No. We can't put you on the waiting list right now. Not a mark. Because you haven't worked for three months. Our waiting list states that you have to have worked three months before... And stay in the street? I can't, you know, obviously I can't... No, just give me this, uh, this answer. Stay in the street. I appreciate that, but we can't provide you with accommodation. OK. We can just advise you to look for accommodation. Please. We can't... Or for one, we can't give you anywhere today. OK. Can I ask something personal? But please don't, uh, don't take me wrong, OK? How many times do you have it today? Sorry? How many times you have eat today? Well, we're talking about housing applications. Yeah, but it's also something no, to do with this. we're not going to personal here. Okay, three days I have that I don't eat. I appreciate that, but you've come I to England see. and you've not sorted out any sort of income, okay. anywhere to live. 
but give me this chance. You this can't go on the waiting list now. Okay, don't worry. So now I go in the street. Thank you very much. Okay. Don't take nothing personal, okay? No, no problem. So. Go everybody away from these places because it's not help. It's just fake. He's going to have to at least work a month in hand before he even gets paid. And because he wasn't on Job Seekers Allowance or anything like that, he won't get anything to cover him. So, yeah, he's pretty much stuck, really. So, what I will do now? I don't know. It's impossible to go to work eh? and stay in the street. But no, I want money because I'm in government. Fuck off. Sorry. <laughs> but I hate this. I really hate. No. With the council having no duty to house him, Vasil is forced to spend the night before work sleeping rough. Sometimes I meet somebody, uh, and then if he like me, doesn't matter if I like him or not, but if he like me, he take me in, um, in his home. We have some sex together. And I feel very dirty. Why I do it? Because I don't have home. I have to stay somewhere. I need one bed. I really, really need. In Britain, single men account for three quarters of all homeless cases. And on average, those sleeping rough don't survive beyond the age of 47. A week after his visit to the council, and 61-year-old Gordon's search for a rented room has proved fruitless. He spent the night sleeping in a car park entrance. Uh, this picture of my two children. This is Guy, he's 25 next week. Uh, this is Francesca, uh, two fantastic kids. Uh, and you keep this with you? All the time, yeah. yeah. I like to think that they, they sort of like, do think about me all the time, you know? And I hope that one day we'll basically be friends. Desperate to avoid another night on the street, Gordon calls the private lettings contacts the council gave him. Oh, good afternoon, Rob. It's Gordon Riggs speaking. I'm inquiring to see if you've got any one-bedroom apartments or accommodation available. No, I'm not. Do you take the access at all? That's a machine. I'm inquiring about if you have any one-bedroom apartments or flats available. Thank you much indeed. Thank you. Uh, up to £500 a month. No, I'm, I'm not working. Bye. The, the first seven or eight calls that I got nothing out of, uh, negativity is not available, and they didn't even ask for me details. And it, it's where you start off with a slow start, a negative start, you think, oh, this is going to go on and on. <laughs> Over half of all the homeless people approaching Portsmouth Council for help are turned away. Emma is one of the lucky ones. Her landlord is evicting her to sell his property and the council are offering to house her. She'll only receive one offer, which she could contest. But if she refuses the property and the council don't accept her reasons, it could result in her family becoming homeless. I'm willing to do anything to make sure that 
we get what we deserve at the end of the day. Everybody else seems to get what they deserve, so why can't we? At the housing department, new tenancy officer Paul prepares to call Emma. We're about to offer Emma a property. It's a one-off only uh, because she's down as a homeless case and there's, you know, the eviction process will, will start at some point in the near future. If she refuses a property, we won't be making any further offers and she will have to make her own arrangements for accommodation. Hello. Hello, Emma. My name is Paul from Portsmouth City Council Housing. Um, the property's come available. It's a two-bedroom, second-floor flat in Grafton Street. Obviously, the same road you're already living in, so I'm assuming you know where that is. Yes, I do. Um, so, would you be interested in viewing that property? Not really, no. Why is that? Uh, height, for one. Um, I wouldn't even be able to sleep due to fear of the kids falling out the windows and stuff like that. Um, I mean, I the windows that. lock. You can take the key away and it's locked and then they can't open them. Um, but I've got a dog as well. Yeah, you can have a, you can have a dog in this property. I spent six years in those flats, mate, and very nearly killed myself being in those flats. Right, OK. What I'd have to do is I'd have to speak to housing options to give them the details of why you're refusing and then they would have to speak to you about it because as far as I'm concerned where I am at the moment it's only one offer of property. No way. They offered me Grafton Street Flats. Oh my God. <laughs> Come with me, I'll show you where the second floor is. Right. The second floor is up there, which is the first balcony you can see. That's the second floor. Now, if you look at that on perspective as the third floor of this house, it's higher. I can't do it. I just can't do it. I lived there for six years. And the place is all for us. Constant arguments and people drinking and people doing drugs, people peeing in the lifts. It's the most depressing place to live in the whole of Portsmouth. It's horrible. I don't think I could have got any worse than what I've just got. I won't accept it. I will do whatever I've got to do now. If they want to fight, they've got one. Gordon's situation has deteriorated. This morning he's recovering after being attacked while sleeping rough. I was awoken by a thud on my head. It was only a small stone and noises outside and laughing. And they were just being verbally abusive, saying I was a tramp and you know, uh, get a life and the police arrived and uh, took the names and addresses and moved them on. It's a me mental torment where you look at these four of them, the youngsters, and uh, <coughs> you know you're in a vulnerable position. It you just, you just makes you really angry. I'm at an age now, uh, I, sh I shouldn't be living on the streets. Fearing another night on the street, Gordon resorts to desperate measures. So this, this is my home for the night. <clears throat> Central heating, it heats, heats the place up so it gets quite warm. That's, I'll get washed in the morning. And that's my soap. I 
Then someone said to me two or three years ago, you'd be living in a, in a toilet, um, divorced, uh, homeless and virtually penniless. I'd probably laughed at them. Just 18 months ago, Gordon's home was a comfortable three-bedroom house where he lived with his wife and children for over 20 years. Uh, that picture of me in dining rooms is one of my favourite pictures when he went to Euro Disney. Uh, I, I, did, I had a good job at the time and everything's happy, Daniel was happy and the future looked bright. to go on the streets with my kids and my dog. I'm not going up that high with my kids. Oh, oh, it would be the end of me. Disappointed with the high-rise flat the council have allocated her, Emma is trying to persuade housing officer Jackie to find her an alternative. The situation is you've been made homeless. You have to be registered for what we've got in terms of And I told you housing. that I couldn't be up high. I mean, I've got my doctor to back me up on that. Obviously, I'm going to talk to a doctor, but we have looked at everything we had. We've managed to find a property in the local area. I managed to register you for a pet-friendly block because generally, in homeless situations, we don't. So I'm satisfied it is reasonable for you to occupy. Not so at that it's not. that is going to be your only offer. If you refuse that offer, you are going to be left homeless. So you would put me and my kids on the street? It wouldn't be me putting you but and your kids on the street. But it would, because I've asked you to help me. It would be you no. putting you and your kids no, on the street. No, not because, because I've asked you to help me. You came in because you were going to be homeless. You wanted some help with rehousing. You could have gone and found a private rented Don't property. Don't you think I've been doing that? Do you think I've just been sat on my fat ass doing nothing? I've registered okay. with every single estate yeah. agent in Portsmouth. Okay. I know you've tried, and I I've know tried that and hasn't tried, yet. Believe me. So then, when we get to a point of accepting the duty, then you will be expected. Well, yeah, to well, I'll kill myself, that. and then it'll be on your head. Won't so, be on my head, will it? Well, yeah, it will be. Well, no, it won't. Well, yes, be. it will be because you haven't listened or taken into consideration to anything I've said as normal. So what we're saying, Emma? I've got to stay out here for a minute. I don't know, put it into bags. Made a bad situation worse, I guess. No, you're all right. Hello, Emma. Hello, Emma. How are you? So you're now saying you want to view the property? Yeah, you're happy to view the property? Yeah. OK. I've not put myself in this position, but what no. choice have I got? I know, I know. Um, I haven't been in the property, so I don't know the condition of it, OK? But any repair work, so if you know, broken doors, windows, yeah. things like that, that's what we would repair, OK? Mm -hmm. Thank you. She came in very, very angry and very, very upset. I think that now she's had time to think about it and she's had it explained to her that actually that property is suitable for her needs and we deem that it's reasonable for her to occupy it, then actually she won't be getting another offer. Turned away by the council, Vasil from Romania plans to save up his wages and rent privately. Today, he successfully completed his first shift at McDonald's. Um, <laughs> this uniform, oh my God, I love 
You see? I can't believe that I won. Oh my god. I'm so happy. I'm still homeless, yeah. I hope I can uh, I can save some uh, some money for uh, for one room. Oh, it's a big dream this, but yeah. If working while homeless wasn't challenging enough, Vasil now faces an even tougher night on the street. I don't have my sleeping bag. I looking for uh, my sleeping bag and then it was not more there. So for sure the people who clean in the street uh, take it or I don't know. I think I will sit here somewhere. Exactly in this corner. <sighs> so I have to sleep in my uniform too. I hope that uh, I will not smell it tomorrow when I go to work. It was my dream to come in England because I love England. I just wanted to have a normal life, stable life, with a job, with a room, like everybody. But you know, today is just a dream. Across the country, the number of people made homeless by their landlords has hit a record high. So preventing eviction from privately rented homes is often the most practical option for a housing officer. Homeless prevention, for me, is the most important part of what I do for a living. If I can prevent somebody becoming homeless in the first place. It means that we're not using social housing stock to house somebody. Emily and Chris are two weeks away from becoming homeless following problems with their landlord. We're here today to see about getting housed because we're facing with an eviction. Um, we don't feel that we have any extra time because of how abusive our landlord has been over the situation. And it's, it's a disgrace, to be honest. To shout at us that he's got a mortgage to pay. <laughs> we didn't shout back. No. We were nothing but <laughs> humble and apologetic for the rent that we've missed, because we've been feeling really bad about that. Absolutely. Rent payments were missed after Chris lost his job. And after three months, he's still waiting for his housing benefit to come through. Yesterday, just heard this bang, bang, bang on our front door. And our landlord had left his car running in the middle of the street and spent the, the next 20 minutes screaming down the road to everyone that we were squatters, that I was mad. I don't know where that really came from. We were scum. That and we belonged in the council estate with all the rest of the scum. Yeah. Based on what you said, it was completely out of order. It was, yeah, it really um, was. You know, no one should have to expect that on their doorstep. No. Um, it was, as I'm sure you can understand, absolutely unacceptable. Yeah, of course. So, do you know how much you owe? Three, seven, seven. I think it's um I think it's about fourteen, fifteen hundred, something in that region. Um, which we obviously don't. Okay. <laughs> he so. was screaming Get out of my house. Okay. Expletives. We really don't want to stay there. Do I think it's gonna be really important for me to speak to the land of the situation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the first part of my job is always to try and prevent your homelessness in the first place. You're like a bearded angel. <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny to say, but honestly, any help, I, if, if you do have any problems, if I can be of any help, do let me know. Thank you. 
Billy needs to investigate Emily and Chris's claims and calls the landlord. Um, good afternoon. My name's Billy Dunn. I'm calling from Housing Options at Portsmouth City Council. He discovers the landlord's list of complaints goes beyond the non-payment of rent. There's lots of dog mess in the garden. What was the condition of the inside of the property then? So it sounds like it's a combination of problems with the rent and things like that and the condition of property. What if those things were to change? So what if I was to help them sort out the financial situation and get some of that money back to you? And if I can try and kind of get us all to a place where you're happy to keep working with them, I think that sounds like possibly the best plan. I mean, how does that sound? He's just frustrated that he's not getting all of his rent and the property's in quite a poor state. The landlord said, if we, as long as we can get those things sorted, I'm happy to carry on renting the property out. If the couple don't do all the things that the landlord's asking of them, and they're, in my opinion, all very reasonable things, um, and that eventually leads to their eviction, the consequences of that would be that I'd have to make an intentionally homeless decision. Having had no luck in his search for a private rented room, Gordon returns to the council for help. I didn't expect to see you back again. Really, I, I actually thought uh, it'd be easy in what it is. I yeah. really did. Yeah, I've gone through the list you gave me. Yeah. Uh, but again, you get the same story, or just an answer machine. Right, OK. So, right. You know, uh, Where are you sleeping now, then? Uh, in the dis disability tour in Old Portsmouth. Oh, no. How long have you been there? Well, off and on for about a week now. So we need to get you somewhere to live, don't we? Somewhere yeah. Or That'd be nice, Jackie. Jackie calls round the lettings agencies on Gordon's behalf. It's Jackie from Housing Options. Well, I've got a gentleman with me. We're trying to find a property for him. He's happy to consider shared. He's desperate, really. You've got nothing in the pipeline, nothing at all. Yeah. What I'm going to do, because we're actually really struggling to get a private rent, right. I think we'll register you anyway on the waiting list. Right. Doesn't mean to say you're going to come up with anything, right. but it's yeah. another option. Yeah. He is hitting a stumbling block. He hasn't got any money up front. He's struggling to get a deposit. Um, and there are no properties around. Despite being added to the housing list, Gordon could be in for a long wait. It can be years before low priority applicants are housed. It is getting to me. I really did think it'd be a lot easier. And, and Jackie confirmed that this morning. You know, it's, yeah, uh, the last, typically the last couple of days I've started to struggle. Sit. Sit. No, it's going to come to me and sit. Having persuaded Emma to view the council flat, Right. New tenancy officer Paul is calling to deliver disappointing news. Hello, Emma. It's Paul uh, from Portsmouth City Council. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. You okay? Good, good. Okay. Um, what I'm going to say to you now, um, hopefully, it won't put you in any kind of bad mood or anything. What I've, what's happened is the property, the, we, the, we've had the, the contractors go into the property uh, to change the locks. While they were in there, what they've identified is the problem, there is a problem with fleas in the property. Yeah. OK. Flea, fleas. I don't really want to go into a place for fleas, especially with a pet that hasn't had fleas. 
I was shocked. When you move into somewhere, you want it to be livable. It needs to be clean, it needs to be able to move into not a health risk for children, you know? Say it. It's just catchy. It's just a really horrible thought to go in somewhere that's already dirty. One in twelve families in the UK are on the waiting list for social housing. Billy is working to prevent another joining them. He's heading to Chris and Emily's home, having convinced the landlord to let them stay. What do you say? If they start paying their rent and keep the property clean. Oh, Chris, how's it going? You right? She's having a look around and using my judgment as to what the state of the property's like. Right. And just keep an eye out for things that I think could indicate them being bad tenants. Carpet's not in great shape at the minute. No, no, it isn't. Doing the best job you can on it is going to go a long way in the yeah. eyes of the landlords. If you kind of look all around there. Oh, OK, yeah. That's the sort of thing I'm talking about. Okay. So if you look along the top of here, that that's quite caked on. Uh -huh. But it's about just making sure it's as, as clean as it can be. Um, and then once again, it's once it's done, it's quite easy to stay on top of that way. And there are a lot of marks and things, like some some brown spots and things. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I know that this is your job, and I absolutely appreciate that. But I don't, I don't feel comfortable with somebody coming round talking about the condition of my house. This is my life. But your landlord has put a plan on the table, which is about getting your finances sorted, getting the property up to scratch. If if that plan isn't here to, it will lead to your homelessness. And then if a landlord's evicted because you've not been maintaining benefit claims you've not been looking after the property, I have to make an intentionally homes decision. That's what the law tells me what, I have what, to do. What will happen to my children then? Literally, what will happen to them? What is actually going to happen to my children? Are they going to die of hypothermia in the street? No, I'm not saying that at all. What then? This isn't fair. I'm not saying that this is an absolutely horrific property. There are some things that could be done here. I'm really trying my <laughs> I'm best here. So I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be ungrateful. The important thing is to stop things getting to the point where you get evicted. Yeah. I'm here to stop that happening. I think the tenants may have different expectations than I would as to how property should be maintained. But they, they need to do the things they need to do to stay where they are. If they don't do those things, they're going to get evicted. I'm not fucking... Oh, I'm not cleaning up that mould. I'm not doing it. No, no, OK. Thank you. Welcome. Emma is on her way to view the property the councillor found her, knowing a refusal could lead to her family becoming homeless. Stinks here, isn't it? Smells like a mixture of human pee and cat pee. 
The rent on the two-bedroom flat is £95 a week, all of which will be covered by Emma's housing benefit. Jesus, that's all I can actually think. I mean, oh. <laughs> Some people got no manners, have they? Well, they do wipe their ass on the ceiling. All this art text is blown in here. It's shocking. Shocking? Yeah. Quite okay. Um, <laughs> are you talking about the decorative condition or...? There's a lot of mould. Okay. A lot of okay. damp. Okay. We will treat it. What about decorating allowance? Decorating allowance, yes. Um, um, for this property of £200. Um, and that you can collect in cash. Right. Um, so, what's your decision on taking the property? Yeah. So, that's a yes? Yeah. It's not like I've been given a choice, is it? It's either take that or live in a cardboard box, basically. I don't have a choice. There is no choice. People are not guaranteed to get social housing. We can't always give people exactly what they want, but we can give them a roof over their heads, which in this day and age is very fortunate. Gordon's search for any kind of home has so far proved fruitless. But today, his luck has taken a turn for the better. Got the keys. A one-bedroom, second-floor flat has unexpectedly become available. Oh, I got a fantastic call from Jackie from the council. And she said, I've got unbelievable news. So we've just been contacted to say there's a one-bedroom flat able to you. And they're actually in Portsmouth. I was literally punched in the air. I couldn't believe it. Wow. Look at the size of it. It's fantastic, isn't it? Look at the views. It's not sunk in yet, it's too much taken all at once. The talk's a bit small. I mean, I couldn't sleep in here anymore, but... <sighs> the children can't respect you. Seeing their father living rough and pouring out with their mother. Hopefully, they'll come to terms and say, well, you know, I've got me back together. My dad's not that bad after all. It's mine. Being a show. The seal's dream of having his own flat has been dashed. He's ended up in London after losing his job at McDonald's. Me, you sure? Manager, he said to me, sorry, we cannot work more together because you are not enough clean. This is mean. It was impossible. I do it my best. I try it to do my best, okay? If the council had given me a home, I will have my job for a long time and I could pay my taxes and have practically normal life, stable life. 
But no, thank you very much, Council. Now I'm in the street, back. In Britain today, there isn't enough social housing to go round. When people approach us for assistance, quite often there's a level of expectation which we can't meet. A lot of people would like to be housed by the local authority, but the truth is, that's just not possible. And how to get a council house continues next Monday at nine. With increasing evidence suggesting London's property boom is being partly fueled by money laundering, From Russia with Cash has an undercover investigation Thursday at 10. Comedy next, our man down is the best man around.